Hi, welcome to Chapter 8 of the Kids Connection. I'm Pam. And I'm Jim. And we're going to do some verses again, some clapping games. And remember, we're going to keep learning our new clapping game. And we have a fun new story. Okay. All right, let's do our verse. It starts like this. One is the sun that shines so bright. One is the moon so high. One is the day. One is the night. One is the sheltering sky. Two are the eyes with which I see. Two are the ears that hear. Joy and sorrow both live in me. So do courage and fear. Let's try that with our friends at home. Are you ready? It starts like this. One is the sun that shines so bright. One is the moon so high. One is the day. One is the night. One is the sheltering sky. Two are the eyes with which I see. Two are the ears that hear. Joy and sorrow both live in me. So do courage and fear. I like that. Excellent. I like that a lot. Now, we're going to do our England-Ireland clapping game. First time with words, second time without words. And you can join us because I think you already know this. Okay. England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales. Inside, outside, donkeys, tails. All right, you ready? There, that was fun. It gets easier, doesn't it, as you go along. Now we're going to do peas porridge hot. Same thing. First time with words, second time no words. Okay. Ready? Peas porridge hot. Peas porridge cold. Peas porridge in the pot, nine days old. Some like it hot, some like it cold. Some like it in the pot, nine days old. Now, okay. just the rhythm. You ready? <laughs> we started going a little bit faster and then we got mixed up. But that was still fun. Do you remember last time we did a new clapping game that is about making rice cakes? And it's in Japanese, mm. so it has some new words or new sounds that we're not maybe used to. And it takes two of us. So one of you, if you have a friend, you can do this with them. If not, you can decide which part you want to do. But for the first part, you're going to be making rice cakes. And so you're, this bottom arm is going to stay still, and the top arm is going to come up and down as you're bringing down your, your mortal. Mortal, your mortar <laughs> to smash the um, the rice. The rice. Yeah. So um, Jim and I are going to do the whole thing. Then we'll review what you learned last week, and then we're going to add in a new some new parts. Okay. Okay. Don't get scared because we're going to go slow, and you're going to be able to learn it. And you can keep rewatching it if you want to practice. All right. Omochio suki masho. Omo chio suki masho. Tetanko, tetanko, tetan, tetan, tetanko. Ti kono te, ti kono te, ti kono, ti kono, ti kono te. Tan, 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 tan. Yeah, and so it sort of ends up on the high note. Yeah. So now, Last time when we did it, I just kept doing the omochio suki macho, and Jim went up and down around my hands. So we did this part, remember? Omochio suki macho, omochio suki macho. So you do that twice, and then we're going to add in a new part, and it's called petanko, mm -hmm. right? And Explain to them what you're doing when I'm doing this. I clap my hand, then I clap your hand. So he's tapping my hand, but his goal is so like the alligator doesn't catch his hand. So when I come down, he doesn't want me to hit him. 
So he's jumping his hand in there really fast so I don't hit him, all right? So we're going to do those two parts together. Ready? See if you can try that. Ready? So he's clapping his hand and putting it in to tap my hand, all right? So let's do from Omochio up through Petanko, and then maybe we'll try adding one more little part, which would be... Um, Hikonote. Right, but first we're going to do what we showed you so far. Ready? Okay. Omochio sukimasho. Omochio sukimasho. Petanko, Petanko. So I have the easy part. I just keep doing the same thing, but I have to keep it steady so he doesn't bump into me. All right. Now we're going to do a third part, which is a little bit like the second part, mm -hmm. but what's different? Well, it sounds a little different. It's he konote. And instead of doing this, I go between and, and I keep trying hit. to go between like that. So instead of patting me, he makes a circle through through the sort of the gap, so he doesn't get hit. Ready? So that it gets faster, right? Try it again. All right. So now we're going to take it from the top again. We're going to start at the beginning and we're going to do it up through hi konate. So it's omochi yo suki macho twice and then it's pet tan ko, pet tan ko, pet tan, pet tan, pet tan ko, and then hi konate, hi konate, hi kono, hi kono, hi konate. All right? You ready? Ready? Omo chio suki masho, omo chio suki masho, pet tanke, pet tanke, pet tanke, pet tanke, pet tanke, hi kono te, hi kono te, hi kono, hi kono, hi kono te. You see that? So next time we're going to learn the ending part, tan, 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 and then you'll know the whole thing. It's really fun to, to learn something that's a little tricky and to be able to do it with your friends. And you can take turns. You can take turns doing both parts. So that was a little bit tricky and a lot of fun. So now we're going to do something that's a little easier, but also that's fun. And my little grandson, Evan, loves this song very much from the first time I sang it to him. So here we go. You're ready to march because we, yes. we do our little marching. Then we jump onto the ship. And then we go this way, that way, forward and back, and then we uh, over the deep blue, over the Irish Sea. Okay, you ready? Ready to dart? Yep. When I was two, I buckled my shoe the day I went to sea. I jumped aboard a pirate ship, and the captain said to me, "We're going this way, that way, forwards, the backwards." Over the Irish Sea. So maybe now you can sing along with us and we'll try it again. You ready? You started. I'll sing with you. Go. When I was two, I buckled my shoe the day I went to sea. I jumped aboard a pirate ship and the captain said to me, We're going this way, that way, forwards and backwards, over the Irish Sea. We had a little dog barking with us, didn't we? That's Luna. She's Tony's friend. And she got a little excited when we started <laughs> jumping on the pirate ship. Hi, Luna. <laughs> so now we're going to talk about the stories that we told last time. And the stories, if you remember, were Aesop's fables. Mm. And we mm -hmm. had four characters, our friends, Paris, Freddie, Vicky and Sue Ellen, and they helped us act out the stories. So if you remember, the first story was the city mouse and the country mouse. 
and Paris played the city mouse, and Freddie played the country mouse. And uh, first, I think Paris came to visit and told a lot of fun stories about the city. And so the country mouse decided he would be so happy to go and see what the city's like. And so when, when um, the city mouse invited him, he's like, yes. And so they got into the city, and it was a big, beautiful building, and there was a banquet set up for them. And they got ready to eat. And who should come along but a cat? who was played by Vicky, the Vicuña. And what was so interesting was that, well, cats like to eat mice, so they ran off and hid. And then they thought maybe it was safe to come out, and so they came back out to their banquet, and here comes a dog who was played by Sue Ellen, the Sheltie. And the dog came bounding in, and they, they ran back, and then the country mouse got her her little carpet bag and her umbrella and said, you know, this is all very nice for you, but I, I like to go back to my country or to my country house where things are more simple. And then we talked about how people are, are comfortable in the place where they grew up and where they feel more familiar. Um, the second story was about two, two goats. goats, two goats, the two goats. Yeah. And in our, in our uh, acting it out, Freddy, right, played one of the goats, and Vicky played the other goat. And they met on a very narrow beam, like over top of a fast running river. And at the other side of the river was what they call a ravine where the, the water will just plunge down, deep, deep down. And so goats are really known for their ability to balance. And so they both walked across this narrow beam, and they met each other. And the story said that it was so narrow that two squirrels couldn't even maneuver their way around each other to get to opposite sides. So these two goats, they met, and they were both very stubborn, and neither wanted to back up for the other one. So they decided to meet and clash with their horns, and sure enough, because of their stubbornness, they fell down off the log and into the ravine. And then Paris said, sometimes it's not wise to be so stubborn. Mm. And it's important to look ahead and think what the consequences might be if you decide that you're going to keep going no matter what. Yeah. So that was the second, the second story. story. And the third one... Paris, the panther, played a lion. Played the lion. And Ferret, or Freddy the Ferret, <laughs> he, he was going to play a mouse, but he thought, since he's so much bigger than a mouse, it would be fun if he would make a little mouse. And so he made a little paper mouse, and he asked Paris if it would be okay if he used his paper mouse for the story. Right, right, right. And so they acted it out together. Do you remember what the story was about, Jim? Yes, the, the mouse came along, and the lion, being so much bigger and more fierce, the, the mouse was very scared and said, Oh, no, please, you know, spare me. I'm just a little mouse. I promise if you let me go and don't hurt me, one day I'll do you a favor. And the, and the panther thought it was funny. He thought it was funny. How could a small mouse do me, a big, strong animal, a favor? What can you do for me? Right. Right. So he let him go. He let him go, though, him because go. he was being sort of generous that day. Yeah. And then another day, the mouse was out in the forest, and he heard a terrible roar. Yeah, and it turns out the, the lion was caught in the ropes of, a let's say, a trapper or someone trying to get him, and he couldn't get free. He was all caught up. And the mouse heard this and came to his rescue, because mice have very strong little teeth, and sure enough, he kept gnawing away while Freddy, right, pretended and helped the little mouse gnaw away at the ropes. Right, Freddy pretended. You're right, and it, and it set the, the lion free. And sure enough, he was very grateful, and it turned out to be right that the mouse, the little mouse, helped the big lion save he, his life. Save his life, and he couldn't believe it, but it was true. Right. So that, I think that, you know, the animals talked afterwards when they were done playing and pretending. They said, you know... You never know who's going to be helpful in a given situation. So those were pretty interesting stories. Mm.
Today, we have a new story. Hmm. A sharing story with Sue Ellen and Vicki. One day, Sue Ellen was playing with her gems alone. It was a rainy day. She was told that there was a virus, which was confusing to her and a little scary, and today especially, made her day feel boring. All the things she missed since the stupid virus started. Well, she hadn't been to the park in a few weeks, and she loved the park and all the trees and butterflies that wafted around and smooth stones in the stream and packing a snack of peanut butter crackers and grape juice. And she wasn't having her friends over like Shantae, who she could giggle with and tell secrets and dress up her dog like a princess. And she wasn't going shopping with her dad and picking her favorite chips or bugging dad for a candy bar at the register. And she wasn't going to school and seeing her friends in class or at recess or at lunch. And that made her sad. Today she played by herself because everyone was too busy. Her big sister Vicky was on her phone and her dad just went back to work. No one wants to play with me today, she sadly thought to herself. The only one who wasn't busy was her little brother, Freddie. But she didn't really want to play with him. He lost some of my gems, and he does that a lot. So to play with Freddie meant feeling frustrated sometimes. And Sue Ellen didn't feel lonely enough yet to go see what Freddie was doing. So she played and counted and arranged her gems by herself. Then Vicky walked into the room. Hey, short stuff, what are you doing? Sue Ellen said, nothing. It looks to me like you are doing something. Sue Ellen just sighed and started to turn so she could hide what she was counting. What are those? Sue Ellen said, why do you care? Vicky said, don't try to hide stuff from me. Dad's not here and I'm in charge. So I get to know whatever you're doing. Sue Ellen tried to protect her gems by putting her paws over them and shelter them. Vicky pushed her paws away. Give them to me. Sue Ellen and Vicky got into a power struggle over the gems. Vicky was stronger, and she ended up taking the gems away from Sue Ellen. Sue Ellen cried and said, I'm going to tell Dad. Vicky said, Go ahead, and I'll tell Dad you stole these gems from Fred. I did not. I got them in the mail. Dad said I could have them. You should share them with Freddy. No, what Dad said was that I could keep them because Freddy doesn't know any better and he might try to swallow them or put them up his nose or lose them. And he already lost some of them. Vicky said, I don't care. I'm keeping them for now. <sighs> Sue Ellen was so mad, she said, I hate you, you're mean. Later that day, Dad arrived back home. Sue Ellen said, Dad, why is Vicky so mean to me? She took my gems. You said I could have them because Freddy is too young, and he might try to eat them or put them in his nose or in his ears. So, so... I like them, and I take care of them. I should have them. <laughs> Dad said, yes, honey, I did say those things. I think you like those shiny gems a lot, and I'll talk to Vicky. You'll get them back. As for Freddy, he's still kind of young for little pieces like the gems. 
But when it is nice, it is nice when boys and girls share. Because Freddie likes to play too. But I know, you miss your gems. Sue Wellen said, oh, I know, I just want them back. Can you ask Vicky soon to give them back? I think next time I'll be more careful who's around when I play with them. Or maybe I'll see if Vicky wants to play gems with me after you remind her that they're mine. So that was a little interesting story about kids fighting over a toy. And when, when one brother or sister has a toy that's special to them and another sibling comes and takes it, it can really cause a lot of hurt feelings and, uh, and people can even become angry, especially when the person whose toy it is feels like they don't have any power to protect themselves or their things. And what was interesting here, um, oh wait, oh, Sue Ellen said that she was minding her own business and she didn't think it was fair for Vicky to come in because she didn't even, it's like she was out playing in the living room or something where, where Vicky could see her, she just sort of barged in. Vicky said that sometimes it's fun to play the bully because you get to act a little bit mean and sometimes it's fun to be mean. And Sue Ellen said, yeah, but then like when you want to play with your brother or sister, they might not want to because you didn't treat them very well. Freddie said he didn't like playing the little brother because he felt like no one cared about him. They just didn't want him to have any fun. Yeah, so Paris said that, that one of the more important parts of the story, he thought, was when um, he came in and got to listen to Sue Ellen and listen to what had happened to her. And instead of um, telling her she was being silly or she was making too much of something and it wasn't really that important, that he felt like it was really important for Sue Ellen to feel like she could say what she had to say and have one of her parents listen. Yeah, and then he said um, agreeing to sort of talk with Vicky seemed like it was going to make a bridge between them so that in the end Sue Ellen even said maybe they could play together as long as it was clear that she owned the stones. And I wonder sometimes if at home you feel like that, like either you're bored or you don't have anyone to play with, but then sometimes when you do have someone around to play with, they're mean, or they do mean things to you, and then it's not as much fun as you thought it was going to be. And it's really nice when you have somebody who can listen and think about what you're saying and hear how much it hurts your feelings. So, Paris says that he thinks it's important for parents to try to learn to listen to their kids and for kids to think about when they grow up to be parents, that they can learn to listen to their kids. Hey, Jim. Oh, it's time for our package. We got another package. All right. And this one was, I think it might have been left on our porch. I'm not uh, sure. Oh, yeah. But it looks like there's a lot of really fun things in here for kids uh, to do. Yeah, cool. Remember last time when we made a mouse? Oh, I do, right. We had some paper we sent like this. Maybe you still have some of that. And if you don't, if you used it to try and make things or draw on it, that's fine. Um, just find more paper. Whatever kind of paper you have on hand is fine. Because we're gonna try to make more mice. This time, even a more challenging one, if you wanna try that. Okay, great. Yeah. All right, and now for the difficult mouse. Are you ready? Let's try it. So, we have another square of paper. Again, doesn't matter if you hold it like a diamond or like a square, either way. And you can see we already have a crease for folding it in half. So, that'll be the first step, fold it in half. Use your fingernail if you like to make it nice and tight, nice and tight crease. Okay, open it back up, do it the other way. Fold it in half again. 
again, one of the hardest things is making these lines uh, line up. It's challenging. And let's, I'll use a uh, pen this time to make a nice tight crease. That works too. Okay, and then we'll unfold that. So this is just like the last mouse we made. We've got an X or a plus sign. So we start the same way. Now, just like the other mouse, we're gonna make those kite shapes. So let's fold this edge this side to the middle and line it up with that middle middle crease down the middle. Get it as close as you can. Don't worry that it's not perfect. You just have to get close. Okay, now the other side. Okay, kite. Did you ever fly a kite? Have you ever done that? They're fun. You need a good windy day though. All right, so let's unfold our kite. Turn it upside down and do the same thing again. Fold this side to the middle crease. And again, now that we've made a couple folds, it, it, the paper gets a little bit trickier to work with because it wants to to uh, go along those crease lines that you've already made. Okay, there's one side, now the other side. our kite again. Now, just like last time, and this is one of the trickiest parts, and just like last time, I'm going to draw a line over those creases so we can see where they are. It might make it a little bit easier to understand what's happening here. Okay. So, I drew lines over some of those creases. And if I lift this tab and I start to push with my finger on this edge right here, I should be able to make it snap inside like that. Did you catch that? You kind of have to play with it a little bit to really see what happens there. All right, well, here's more practice. Take this tab, push with your finger, not too hard, but push it inside until it wants to sort of snap into place. And there we go. We've made those two little points inside again. Okay, now this is the more difficult mouse, so we have to keep going from there. So, I'm going to take one of those points on the inside and fold it down like that and you know what let me draw another line okay so now i made a line in the middle well we're going to fold see that little point on the bottom there I'm going to fold it up and line up the edges again so i'm going to fold it into the middle let me do that Wow, do you see what we did there? So you folded it to the middle, and let's do the same thing on this side. Now, as you can see, this one is kind of in the way. So if you go ahead and just lift it up a little bit, we can move it behind, okay? Because we're gonna tuck this down, just like we did last time. I'll draw a line in the middle again. Okay. And so we brought that down. So again, we're going to fold this bottom part up to the middle crease. And I kind of have to, well, let's see. 
Oh, it goes like that. So yeah, fold it up to the middle crease, just like you did on the other side. Okay. And if I, I did fold it up. Now if I take it and stand it up a little bit, um, like that, how about that? Let's, let's move our paper like this and then see if you can just kind of pick this up so it almost looks like a mountain. And then the one that you did before that, pick that one up so that also stands up like a mountain. Now they kind of come together and it should look like that. So yeah, kind of looks like one big mountain in the middle there. Okay, well, you can sort of like smash them pointing up like that. So take it and flip the whole thing. And this bottom point, we're going to fold it up about mm, beyond the center crease. So a little bit beyond that. I'd say maybe about that much looks pretty good. Okay, make a nice tight crease. All right, um, another fold. And this one is a little trickier too. So now we want to make a fold that goes from, what? let me make some guidelines here. I'm making a dotted line to show where the next folds are going to be. So you're going from the middle of the bottom up to this point here and the middle of the bottom up to this point right here. So this fold, it's, you know, they're getting trickier. This is, this is definitely harder than the first one. So go ahead and see if you can fold it along the dotted line. Okay, there's one side. All right, let's try the other side. Fold along the dotted line. Make your creases. It should look something like that. Did you get that at home? Now you can fold the whole thing into the middle like this. All right, you folded it into the middle, and now if we turn it around a little bit, we can start to see something is starting to take shape. All right, and maybe it's starting to look a little bit like a mouse. Whew, okay. So now, you could, these are the ears, obviously, and this will be the nose. You could leave it like this. There would be no problem with that. There is just a little bit more folding if we want to be fancy about it. We could take one of the ears and fold it back so that this part of the ear is sticking straight up. So maybe like that. That's one way. See how it, it sort of cocked the ear, the ear back a little bit? Now, if we do the same thing on the other side, we can take this ear, try to, ah, here we go, uh, fold it back so it matches the other one. Okay, make a fold. No doubt, this part with the ears, this, this is a little challenging. And then, See, now I drew the creases on there, so now my mouse, he does have a little bit of a, a line on his face, but that's okay. We kind of needed to do that to make him. Um, a nice thing to do here is, if you have a pencil or pen, if you look at the ears, you'll see there is a little opening. And if you put the pen in there, you can start to like puff out the ears a little bit. Ah, like that. Okay, if you see the opening, See if you can put like your fingernail mico in there. I'll use my finger this time. And just kind of like wiggle it so it kind of puffs it out. Now they look a little bit more convincing as ears. 
Okay, and so we're getting very close here. For the tail, I like to do it very simply by just taking it and um, just sort of fold it up like that, bend it up, make a little crease. All right, now if we've done everything right, this should stand up on its own. Let's see what happens. Oh, it does, excellent. Now, if you're like me, you wanna draw a little face on there. So again, we'll take our marker, whatever you've got. I'll put a little nose on the end. How about some whiskers? No mouse is really complete without whiskers. And um, a little eye. Okay, we'll ignore the, the big pencil mark on his face. <laughs> All right, and we can do that again on the other side just to show you. So color in his nose. Let's make some whiskers. A little eye. All right, and there we go. We have our mouse. Whew, that one was challenging. Okay, that's going to take some practice. That's not necessarily easy to do. Okay, but I hope you will practice making mice. So today we heard a story about feelings. When you're upset or you're sad or maybe you're afraid or you're a bit angry, sometimes other people try to tell you not to feel that way. I know, I know. Sometimes when you're a kid you feel like no one listens to me. No one cares what I think. They don't care that I'm mad or, or feel bad. They just want me to get over it and, and move on. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't seem right. No, and I think that um, feelings are normal. We all have them. Adults have them and kids have them. And feelings come and go. And so it's really nice when you have a feeling to have somebody listen. And you can even listen to your friend's feelings. Mm. I remember a time when my son was a, a little boy and he had a really good friend and they both had big sisters. And I heard them trying to play a game upstairs. And um, one of them said to the other, I never get to be first. And the other one said, and then they said, do you ever get to be first? And the other one said, no. Because they both had big sisters who always wanted to be first. And then one of them said, maybe we should take turns going first. And so they sort of worked that out themselves. And I think sometimes if you don't have somebody close by who will listen to you, sometimes it can be one of your friends and you can listen to each other. That's really good. Yeah, because I know, because f fights, let's face it, fights happen a lot sometimes. Mm -hmm. And fighting, sometimes it, it just seems like, it's like eating, you seem to do it all the time. And it would be nice sometimes to take a break, a little break from the fighting. Uh, yeah. And listening to each other is a good way to, to try that. Yeah, and sometimes you might be able to think about what that other person might be feeling, because you know how you feel, so That's you right. also know how they feel. That's right. So today, we did our verse again. One is the sun that shines so bright. And we talked about joy and sorrow and courage and fear, all feelings. We did our clapping games, England, Ireland, and Peace Porridge. And we also did Omo Chiyo Tsuki Macho. And we, macho. And we were practicing. We learned the second and third part, which was... Um, Pet Tom Co. Pet Tom Co. Pet Tom, Pet Tom, Pet Tom Co. And then we also learned He Konote, He Konote. And the next time we're going to learn the last part, and then you'll know the whole thing. So that'll be fun. We're going to have a brand new story for you next time, and we're going to make something special. So we'll see you for chapter eight.